But you know, once upon a time, one of the one of the most popular clips uh, from the show, and and one of my favorite examples was when you brought in the jars of dice. Dice, yeah. And and you're going to kind of do something uh, remotely related today. Yeah, we have another demo with dice. Fun with dice. Okay, so standard size, like six sided regular die, like you buy at the store in the gaming section. Um, one through six on it, no tricks. It's not weighted, it's just normal. I'll take your normal word for it for now. from the grocery store, yeah. <laughs> Observe. Don't take it on faith. <laughs> All right, so based on what you know, I mean, you're familiar with dice, right? You probably use them in magic and, and you do some gaming things with, and so based on what you know about this die, is it possible to roll a three? Yes. How do you know that? Well, because we know that there are six numbers on the side and that any of them could possibly come up. And I've rolled right. a three before with similar objects right. and seen them rolled. Okay. Um, and if we had, well, is it possible to roll a five? It would seem so, yes. Probably for the same reasons. Yep. And we could probably roll a seven, too. No. We couldn't? Not on one die. I don't understand. Well, there's only the numbers one through six, so you couldn't possibly get a seven. Oh, you know what I forgot to tell you? Oh. We have infinite rolls. Oh, okay. So then you would roll and then roll again and add it together. No, no, no. I mean, each time I roll, that would be one roll, and that would only count once. But, but there's infinite rolls, so now can I roll a seven? No. Why? Um, because each individual roll has the same possibilities as the first. But not a seven. Not a seven. Hmm. Okay, well, all right, let me try this another way. I've got this bag. Okay. And you don't know what's in this bag. That's correct. You don't, because I did it when you weren't looking. And I'm going to take this die, oops, and I'm going to put it in the bag. Okay. Now... Is it possible to roll an 18 with whatever's in this bag? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, then it must be possible. No, it, that, not necessarily. Well, oh, I forgot to tell you. Whatever's in the bag, we get to roll it infinite times. Which doesn't change anything, because it could still just be the one die in there, which means the only possible uh, outcomes are one through six. But this bag is big enough to hold three die, dice, which would roll an 18. So is it possible to roll an 18 with what's in this bag? Well, it, I don't know what's in the bag, so I can't say that it's possible to roll an 18 with what's in the bag. What I could say is that if there were three dice in the bag, then it would be possible to roll an 18. Okay, so not knowing doesn't mean that it's possible. Correct. You'd have to know something that informed you to be able to justify the possibility, sort of like what you were describing with the sides to the die? Mm, I, I also can't say it's impossible. Okay, well, if it's not impossible, then it's possible. No, well, it, as a matter, as, as what it actually is, yes, but what we believe about it, whether or not we are justified in claiming that it's possible, no. Hmm, so, but, but if somebody said, this, so if somebody could say it's possible, and then, but they're not justified? Yes. Hmm. So, I don't know how many are in here, and you don't know how many are in here. Now, we're talking about this kind of a die, right? Okay. Since you don't know how many are in there, I mean, there could be a million in there, right? Well, I, there couldn't be a million in there. But you don't know how many are in there, so how can you say that? Well, I, it, assuming we're talking about dice of the size you showed me, we Yeah, these. Can, Without measuring, I can still estimate that you couldn't fit a million of them into that bag. Probably because of what you know about volume, I'm assuming. Mm, yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, all right. Let me just see. So somebody might say, okay, it's possible you could roll an 18. And when you're saying they're not justified in that, but they, they might still say it. They might still believe it, right? Yes. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm dumping out the contents of the bag. And that's pretty much it. So if somebody were to say that it was possible to roll an 18, they would, in fact, be wrong. Yes. 
I mean, it's not just anymore a matter, now that we know what's in the bag, it's not a matter of even saying, you know, might they have been wrong before. They were actually wrong even when they were saying it was possible, because yes. it was impossible. And it sounds to me like they're calling something that's impossible, possible. Isn't that what they did? It would seem so, yeah. Well, that's quite a little trick. And when you say it's not, you're saying it's not impossible, but you can't say it's possible. You mean you can't say it's impossible. It, it is clearly impossible to, I, I to reject, roll the 18. I reject their claim that it's possible. Right. But that doesn't mean that I'm claiming it's impossible. Okay. Because I don't have enough knowledge to determine whether or not it's possible or impossible. But from a realistic standpoint, from everything that we knew about that situation, we really couldn't make a claim that it's possible or impossible. And the fact that we couldn't say that it was impossible at the time didn't mean that it was valid to call an 18 roll from two dice possible. Correct. And in fact, to have said that it was possible would mean that you were, in fact, wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong about your assessment. Um, and it also means that you use the word possible to describe things that are impossible because that's what we just did. We said that if somebody were to call it possible based on the fact that they don't know um, and based on the fact that there could be three die in there, what they just did was label the possible or label the impossible as possible. Which is why there's a fallacy that is the argument from ignorance fallacy, which isn't about being stupid. Okay. It's about um, you don't know. Right. And because you, you can't uh, because somebody can't demonstrate that your claim is false, you go ahead and claim that it's true. But I didn't say it was true. I said it was possible. Oh, well, sure. But it, you're, you're claiming that it's true that it is possible. I see. And the reason that I brought this demo up, um, there's a lot of things that this can apply to. But the reason that I'm bringing it up is because specifically I hear this argument from people who say, Oh, what if there are infinite universes? Since God is possible, that means at least one of those universes has a God. And my question to them is always, how do you know that a God is possible? You don't know that. And you, you're asserting it, but have you justified that yet? And I think for a lot of people, they don't even think about the idea of requiring a justification for a possibility. Yeah, it's kind of this... Anything's possible is, first of all, one of the kind of tropes that gets mm -hmm. into people's mind. Anything's possible. Well, no, that's not true. You know, as, you know give me one of those dice, yeah. and we can roll, and we're never going to roll anything other than a one through six on it. Right. We're not going to roll a negative four. Right. Uh, just not going to happen. And so this idea that anything's possible is false. And then, you know, as you're pointing out, this extension of, well, you can't demonstrate that it's impossible, so I must be justified in thinking that it's possible, which is just a straight up argument from ignorance. Right. Uh, fallacy, which again, for those who aren't familiar, that doesn't mean you're stupid. Although, if, if you repeatedly uh, commit those fallacies after having them explained to you and continue to get it wrong, you might actually uh, have, uh, maybe be stupid. Okay. But I don't know how many people that apply to. So I just the thing is, we're all stupid about various yeah. things, or we're all ignorant about various things at various times. Um, and it's one of the reasons why we do these shows and have these conversations, is to kind of open people's uh, minds to some Yeah, of and I mean, possible may be less committal than believe or than yeah. know, but it is still a commitment to a position, um, and it still requires justification. And if someone's going to call something possible, they have to do better than show that you can't demonstrate it's impossible. Yeah. That's no different than saying it exists because you can't demonstrate it doesn't exist. Yeah. It doesn't become possible just because I, it, just because Matt couldn't demonstrate that there weren't three dice in the bag mm -hmm. did not make it possible to roll the 18. Just doesn't. So when you're going to say God is possible, you're going to have to come to the table with a little bit of evidence about how you came to that conclusion or even justification of some kind that's going to have to be you know, somewhat aligned with the reality of things that exist. And, and probably start with some sort of definition of what you mean by God. Um, and then we'll have to go on to what you mean by exists. Right. Because you, know, you had that conversation yeah. a, a while back of... Uh, ju just a very proposition, some God exists, uh, 
or just God exists. Yeah. Both of those two terms have to be clearly understood because quite often we're not talking about the same thing when we yeah. engage with callers. So if you're confronted with this, please don't take your inability to demonstrate something as impossible as a requirement on your part to allow anyone to claim anything is possible regardless of what they're claiming. You yeah. don't have to show that it's impossible. You merely have to ask for um, their justification for asserting that they know this is possible. And this actually goes to um, a discussion of burden of proof. And I got an email this week. Let me, um, what the heck, let's, let's try doing a live email on the air thing, uh, because as long as I can get to this, it would be nice to actually answer it. Um, While you're looking for it, I'm just going to say, I mean, the question that I'm asking basically is, how do they intend to show that there is a God side on this die? Yeah. They have to show that there is a God that can roll. And if they can't, then they're just saying that rolling a seven is possible or, you know, that, that it's just as, as good as saying that you could roll a six. And it's just like, no, I, I don't see that seven. So I don't I don't know that that you could roll a seven there. Um, so if you're going to claim that God is possible, he's got to be on one of those sides. And you have to show me how you know that. So the email that came in was, uh, hello, Mr. Dillahunty. I learned in a philosophy course that the burden of proof is on the one who contradicts your presumption. Now, I didn't immediately attack that first sentence, although I will hear that's simply not true. That, that, that applies to um, uh, conversational uh, arguments about, I want to change your position. Um, my question is more to whether or not your presumption is, is rationally justified. And he goes on to say, if I believe in a God and you want to convince me God does not exist, you have the burden of proof. I agree. If I want to convince you that God exists and you do not believe that he does, then the burden of proof is on me. I agree. If we try to convince each other of opposite positions on the existence of God, then we both have a burden of proof. And he continues on, but I won't read through all of it, because my response was, you misunderstand my position. Atheism is not the positive claim that there are no gods. It's the rejection of the claim that some god exists. If I was trying to convince people that there were no gods, you would be correct. I would have a burden of proof. But I'm not trying to convince people that there are no gods. I'm pointing out that the various god claims have failed to meet their burden of proof. And therefore belief is not yet rationally justified. And he wrote back and he said, so if I understand correctly, an atheist does not believe in God, makes no positive claim that there is a God, but he also does not believe there is no God. Uh, that sounds like agnosticism to me. So for clarity, atheism is divided into a couple different categories, soft and hard atheism, weak and strong atheism. Um, the strong, hard atheism yeah. position is one that I've often labeled anti-theism. I have a video on YouTube explaining why I do that. The nuts and bolts of it, the minimal qualification to be an atheist is to not believe that a God exists, yeah. to reject the theistic All proposition. All atheists do not believe a God exists. There are, though, atheists who go a step further and actually believe that there are no gods, and that is the strong atheist or anti-theistic position. Um, but it is not... Um, uh, that is not the position that is the minimal one for atheism. Now, the reason it sounds like agnosticism to you is because a lot of people have posited this uh, view of agnosticism as some sort of middle ground between theism and atheism. There is no middle ground between theism and atheism. There is no middle ground between belief, uh, I believe, and I do not believe. Um, there's just not. You yeah. either believe or you don't. Now, the reason you think this is because of the, you know, the, the kind of, I guess, marketing that's been done with the agnostic label. And Gnosticism and agnosticism address a question of knowledge, whereas theism and atheism address a question of belief. And if you dig around, you'll find out that knowledge is a subset of belief. And so if we're talking about the proposition that a God exists, you either believe, in which case you're a theist, or you do not believe, in which case you're an atheist. And if you believe that the claim is actually false, you would be a strong atheist or anti-theist. And in nowhere in this conversation do we mention the terms uh, Gnostic or agnostic, and that's because we're talking about what you believe about a claim, not what you know or claim to know about a claim. And so that's the uh, quick and dirty answer to uh, Pavel's, Pavel's question. And uh, I don't know if you had more or if we just wanted to No, I think the that's, that's it. That's okay. all I had.